Okay, so first time going live. Actually, pretty excited. Uh, little jitters, no cuts, no edits, real time, real code. So um, this is actually going to be the second installment to our Power App platform, where we actually it's a third video of a second installment. And if you take a look at my screen, I think I got everything right here. Uh, first time using this software, first time going live. Um, but I think everything is good. So you should see me in the in the lower your lower right hand corner. You should be able to see my screen. I can't really crop or move anything around. Um, maybe because of the software I'm using. But let's go ahead and get to it. And and if this works, and then maybe twice a, a month um, on Saturday mornings around this time. Uh, we'll do these live sessions and maybe incorporate some Q&A and things along those lines. So definitely if there are questions, go ahead and hit me up in the chat and uh, I'll be able to uh, jump in and help out with that. All right, so let's go ahead and third time, get started. So the, the equipment request list, and if you click on new, just to kind of recap of where we left off, here we have our tabs loading up. You would notice that when I first hit new on this form, there is nothing loading. We get this blank white box and then I have to hit the detail tab and then it kind of loads. The status tab is not loading. You get this getting your data and this is just a placeholder. It's actually not doing anything because this form for the status is not wired up and the form for photos is not wired up and we don't currently have a form for the notes tab. So let's go ahead and uh, fix some things here. I actually got some cheat sheet notes uh, right here. These are the three items we're going to work through. And let's go ahead and get started. I think I'm still live. I'm, I'm nervous. I, I tell you because I, I, I think I'm more nervous than anything of a uh, tech glitch than anything else. So let's see what happens. Uh, let's go ahead and launch Power Apps and see what we can see. So the first thing we want to do, here's my notes here. First thing we want to do is to address the low issue with the form. And, and this is this is actually a, a similar pattern that we practiced on the, the previous um, pattern that we had with multiple forms and tabs. Uh, you, you pretty much have to tell it when the page loads, like on load or whatever the case may be, to execute this same variable setting so it, really you have to set the initial values for uh, your variables so let's do this let's just copy this and what I'm doing is copying what's on the on click aka on select for the detail button go to my SharePoint integration and I'm gonna just go ahead and drop it into all three scenarios so I need it here for when I'm creating a new form I need it here when I'm actually editing an existing item and I need it here when I'm actually viewing an existing item, right? And really, that's all you need. So once you get that initial state for your variables uh, set, it then will activate the details button and then go ahead and load up the correct form. So the other thing that we need to fix is that you would notice as I'm clicking on these buttons, I'm not getting the change in color showing that that button, AKA tab is actually highlighted. So to get around that, what we want to do is, uh, first thing I want to do is get the fill, and I'm gonna do this by flip flopping the fill color. So for each button click, I'm actually setting the variable that says this uh, this tab is 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 live. Well, I'm actually putting true in there. So I'm, and I'm using Boolean values, so true or false. So what we want to do is that we would take also leverage that variable when the button is clicked, aka tab, and change the fill color. So that's the approach. So what I want to do is I'm gonna go to my the button that's red now, copy this fill color. Let me just jump into my notepad here and capture these. So this is going to be my active color, and this is going to be my inactive color. And for my inactive color, I'm going to go to a, a button that has the fill color that's gray, and copy that. Right. So once I have my colors set up, now all I need to do, let me just start with this first button. So in this fill property, I'm going to just put a condition check here. 
and that's the beauty with these properties. I mean, you can have logic in the in the property itself that actually sets the value for that property based on some condition, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So the variable that represents the detail tab is called var details, and if this is true, because again, I'm dropping in a I'm dropping in the boolean, so this is going to test as true. Uh, so if this is true, go with the red color, uh, and if it's false or else, go with the gray color, and that's going to be that guy. So let me comment, copy that, and if I hold down my Alt key and test it, when I select status, it turned gray. When I select detail, it turns red. So let's go ahead and drop that in for the rest of them. And it's going to be almost an exact copy with the change of, oops. I didn't see I'm on status the status button so var status is going to be the variable that represents the status button and then var photos would be the one that represents the photo tab aka button and then notes is going to be the one that represents var notes is going to represent this one all right so let me go here uh, let me oh I'm live so let me kill let me kill let me quit teams I think I'm already out of email yeah someone's gonna be famous for the wrong reason all right so I think I'm good all right so now that's going to status that again oh don't do this there you go this is what happens when you go live no pausing no cutting all right I was able to catch it all right cool all right, so now if I hold down the Alt key, all right, so now my colors are doing what they need to do, and let's just test the form load issue. So I'm just go here, save, and publish this out, and let's just test this out. And what I want to do is go to the equipment list. So let me, let me just point something out really quickly. So here you have the inventory. This is where I'm at. But then I'm using ShareGate to get copies of the inventory list just so that, you know, I can practice and actually have uh, other people who are training with me on Learning Power App. So they're actually using these to practice because still as of now, there is no way to copy a Power App custom form and implement it export or import that into another list so you you're constantly finding yourself rebuilding these uh from scratch but you know i think repetition is the mother of skill you know as the saying goes um but part of this process like recreating all the site columns and content types or whatever the case may be with the list schema and definition that's just repetitive and that's not the skill we're trying to build here we want to focus on uh, building a power app so what I do I use ShareGate just once I kind of get the schema together and sometimes in most cases data as well and I just want to go through and practice and rebuilding the, the power app I would just copy that list and then paste it here and what currently with ShareGate if you copying a list uh, that exists and paste it in a different location the power app does not go along for the right I don't know if that's going to be fixed in the future or not but we'll see but that's a big issue right I mean if you start thinking about the life cycle because sometimes especially when these things go into production that's when it gets tricky that's when you have to make changes off hours and um, most of us are m working more than eight days if you are a, a, a pro I was going to say real pro but I'm not going to I'm not going to judge anyone but you know you have to work out some of these changes you have to do off hours right because if they're currently being used during production the worst thing you want to do is make a change and publish and someone may be in the middle of something and it doesn't save or something along those lines so it's interesting that the cycle of how to make these changes is not it's not that great currently the story is not that great okay so we come up here and we click on new and my form is popping up and as you saw uh, I can click on the various uh, tabs and those are showing the right color as exactly okay so as far as item one this is done item two let's wire up our forms so what do I mean by wire up the forms so if I go back into power app studio you would notice here on the left this is the tree view of all the different controls and hopefully you can see this um, 
I have multiple forms, you know, if as you recall from the previous video. So now with this form here, form status, this is a separate form. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but high level, this form is pointing to the same data source. And we also set the item property for the form to point to the same list item. So here, representing one list item, I have one, two, three forms. This SharePoint form one, this is going to be my main form that I use to save data to back to my SharePoint list. All right. So, you know, once we kind of wire things up, that will start to make sense. So the first thing we want to do when you look at this list, the issue we run into is when I hit status, I'm not seeing any form fields. And that's because my form, my instance, my separate instances are shadow copies. Should we call it shadow copies? Yeah, let's call it shadow copies. So my shadow copies are are currently not in the right state to accept data. So to e it's actually an easy change. And I went through many different patterns to try to get this to work. And sometimes I overcorrect it. And then when I did it the second time, I, I did not do another step, which was kind of nasty. Uh, just I just made this simple change. And everything seems to work and I tested it out with editing the item viewing the item creating a new item in all those scenarios it was able to capture data save data and things seem to work so the simple change is if you go to this form you go to its display mode and no and no this is I'm sorry default mode I called it display mode and it's not that this is uh, your default mode is based on your form modes and your display mode is based on the display mode. So what's the difference? Well, the form mode is when you do this, when you actually are in the form and you're doing a new, that's one mode. And if I had an item here, I'm viewing it, that's the view mode. And if I go to edit, that's the edit mode. The display mode are usually those modes that you get for controls and that's usually view, edit and disable. And that's how and that's just interacting with that control. So if the control is in view mode, it's read only. You can't make any changes. If it's in edit mode, you can make changes and it will save those once the save digest cycle executes. And if it's in um, disable mode, there's nothing you can do. And it's actually a special color. There's a disable color and disable border and all this other good stuff that you can use. And you see something like that disable mode, you're going to trigger that if a validation is incorrect or has not passed yet. So those are the different modes. So don't mix them up. And I just did that. I mixed them up. But anyway, for your default mode, aka form mode, you just want to mimic the form mode on your SharePoint form one. Right? So if I do SharePoint form one dot mode, which is form mode, this will activate these forms instances right copies shadow copies shadow copies so we activate these forms shadow co copies right so if I say this off go and file say and then publish to SharePoint so if I push this all um, and then come back to the equipment list hit control F5 so I'm getting the latest and greatest and then if I go to new and then hit status it didn't work but we always know you have to do control F5 and I think in, in my case from my experience if you're in control F5 on the f on the list itself actually has almost most of the time zero effect it's not until you go into the edit mode of the form and hit control F5 that seems to trigger the latest and greatest changes for that form so just a tip um, it, and that seems to usually work for me. Sometimes, depending on the change, I have to do it three or four times. All right, so now we have this in here. So let me let me just go to Amazon real quick. Uh, have you guys played around with the Surface Laptop or Surface Book? Leave me a comment if you're if you're doing the Surface things of uh, of the house. I'm not a Mac user. I've been PC from day one, but I'm, I'm very interested in Surface, and they're to me they're highly priced and I just can't justify it and it's not like a Mac right because a Mac you pay the extra price but then again you kind of get into that Mac ecosystem whereas 
PC and Surface, they're highly priced, but it's almost like, well, I can go down here and get a Lenovo entry level and get access to Windows 10. And of course, it's not going to be performant because your CPU and your RAM and all this other stuff, but I still can get a beefy laptop for a thousand and uh, kind of go from there. So just let me know if you like your Surface compared to any other PC laptop brand that you used in the past. Very interesting. I'm actually on the fence. I don't know. All right, so here we go. I'm just pasting in this information. And now what I want to do, let me flip the publish flag and let me set a date. And I'm not going to fill this out because I know it will, it will not save. So now if I hit save, here you notice I got part of the information. Well, I didn't touch the orange hand or anything like that. So let me just modify this just to be clear. So if I go to the status and I put 999 on hand and 999 for order, hit save nothing's happening right you notice on the list itself that this data is not making it to be saved all right so I get partial and that's my main form but I don't have the other one so let's go ahead and do that wire up what we need for our shadow forms so for our shadow forms you will notice that we got data cards let me just pick on form photos you have data card one through four and if you go down to SharePoint form you got data card uh, for photos I don't have anything and that's the first thing so the first thing whatever I have here and I want to save I have to have the same instance of those site columns on my main form All right so let's go ahead and fix that so if I go to edit and add field let me just type in photo that's gonna bring in all these guys and then I'm gonna just select them one by one hit add they're gonna add them as a group this is perfect now let me go ahead and collapse this because I still need my real estate so I can see everything now Photo one through four, um, I don't want this to display for my user, right? So if I hit down the Alt key, hit the Detail tab, you will notice that these photos are popping up. I don't want these photo site columns showing on the Detail tab. That's why I have a separate tab for them to kind of break this large form up to something more bite size. So what I want to do, I want to hide these. Even though they're on my main form, I don't want the user to interact with them. I want to interact with them in the background. So let's just go ahead and hide these. And then you can simply do that. Uh, by select and turn the visibility off select oops, select control flip the visibility off select control so we do that for all this normally if I was editing this video and not shooting live um, I would have time frame through that or uh, time lapse through that okay so now I have my data cards up for and, and these are kind of like my I don't know what you want to call them we, let's think of a, a different name to call these but anyway these are kind of like my 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 data holders or my data shippers because what's going to happen is that I'm gonna take this value here that the user real interact with on the real form and this data value card here this holds the value uh, that the user inputs into these text boxes right before not before it even hits the site column so again your form and to interact with the data or to collect the data is separate from the site column in the list that's actually there to store the data and to retrieve the data. So there's a clear separation of data gathering and data storage. And that's what's happening here. So in this case here, and this, and this is where it's really apparent because normally with a single form, that's all wired up. So it seems it's invisible and there's, uh, you know, there's no extra work to make that happen. So we take that for granted, but here, the concept of separation of concern or separation of duty is very clear and it actually costs us a few more steps to, to make this happen. And I'm gonna elaborate on this a little bit longer or a little bit more as we wire these up because these are key concepts that you have to understand. And if you understand the key concept of the data is separate from the form itself and the form is only there to gather the information validate it and then ship it down to the list or any other data source in our case it's always going to be a SharePoint list or a document library uh, to store that data if you understand that concept now you get to understand how you can manipulate that data because the form is really just your presentation later okay so here as I mentioned before this data card value is going to store the data 
that the user actually input and if they don't touch it wherever data that's in there even like if this is edit mode and I grab that site column and I'm displaying that data the user didn't touch it that value still will be here um, and, and able to be safe so what I'm gonna do because I'm gonna use this in the formula I'm gonna rename this and I'm gonna prefix this with V and I'm gonna name it name it the uh, site column so V follow one and I'm going to rename this to V photo 2 and V is for value right and then I'm going to do the same for 3 and 4 all right V photo 3 and V photo 4 all right so once I get these renamed the, the second piece is now in the, in the formula I can reference these and know exactly what I'm dealing with versus data card value underscore 14 I have V photo 4 and I know exactly what that represents now what I want to do in my main form is to set that value from my shadow form into my main form field right and you do that through the update property on the data card right so from the up update property on the data card I have to unlock this first so let me unlock it and now I'm gonna just do where I'm at. I'm at photo four. So V photo four, right? Dot text. And here, here's a pro tip. A pro tip is when you go and start updating these guys, whatever dot value you have on the right of that, keep that. That'll take the guesswork out of the entire equation. Because right now my save prop. Pro, um, my save property or update property is very simplistic because I'm dealing with a single line text. Remember when we created these um, site columns, we the type we used was single line text, and then uh, you know you have multi line text, but then multi line text you got plain text, rich text, and all these other configuration options. But then you got some rich data types like the people group field or the choice column or the multi select choice column, things along those lines. So each one of those have a different dot property because the data types are different for each one of those site column types so to take the guesswork out of it just when you do the paste just do the paste to the left of the dot and keep the dot whatever uh, the same and that would just save you a lot of headache in the future all right so here I'm gonna just go ahead and just go ahead and drop these in try to do this quickly all right follow two actually let me just save myself a few keystrokes and go to update oops update and photo two Ooh. okay so much for saving keystrokes for the one all right all right so that's that so now what's wired up i have everything that the user inputs here using an uh, override function or override property value setting uh, into my main form and now I'm good to go now I have to do the same for the rest of these guys so published I honestly I wish this is where let, let's just do a few of them because I don't want to waste a lot of video with here with me doing a lot of this um, typing so what I'm gonna do in this video and of course on your side you want to do the entire uh, set but in this video I'm gonna go ahead and do on hand and on order so at least for both my shadow copies uh, I'm saving data back so I'm collecting data in the shadow but I'm saving it back to my main form so let me go here to uh, SharePoint form one let me go to edit mode and let's go ahead and add in on hand and on select so I'm just typing the word on and that's gonna give me on hand at both and once I have these selected same deal I want to hide them because I don't want the user to interact with these data cards on my main form aka detail tab and once that's done I just oh let me go here rename these guys oops make sure data card value make sure you rename the data card value and this is going to be V on hand and this guy is going to be V on order all right, so now I just come down here for on hand, go to the update property on the data card itself, not the control. Wow, you see what they did here? See, by default, they're wrapping this value into a value. Um, they're wrapping the string value into a value function because 
somewhere along the line I select it even though it's single line text or maybe I select it numeric site column right so that it only takes digits or integers and here the form control is dealing with a string so this is why again this is why it's important to really just come in here and just replace the piece that you really need to replace so this is on hand right and for on order I think it's gonna be very similar I and when I was putting this video together I didn't notice that before I don't know why but it's all good all right, so now we all wired up. Let's test this thing out. So now I'm saving it and pushing it up. And now I'll get here, hit refresh. And of course, edit mode, refresh. So let me go here, edit this guy. And all my refreshes are control, holding down the control key and hitting F5. So control F5. Now, with these shadow forms in place and with this new model, we're using multiple forms to save data. We want to make sure that we cover all of our pieces to the CRUD, right? So let's go and edit this. Um, so status, first check. I tried 999 on order. I have 56. And if I say this all, we in business, right? So we go and edit, hit status, and they remain. If I well, let's do an update. So that was an ad, right? So let me do an update, save it. Interesting. Did you see that? Did you see that? You see how I had to type that in twice? Now let, let me explain something to you. I type okay so this is this is my form acting weird when I click save it updated and it left this dialog box open for whatever reason if I close this dialog box and if I hit refresh you would notice that <laughs> it didn't save wait what all right so hold on all right uh, live demo calm down Deshaun it's okay it's okay all right, so 888 hit say, I get 888. So if I do edit again, and let me explain something. Let me explain two things for you. All right, and if I hit save again, which comes through, the 888 or the 8887? Okay. Okay, this is nasty. Actually, I've never seen it behave like this before. I know how to resolve this. I'm, I'm just trying to make a point. Um, maybe there's dramatic effect, maybe. All right, so 887. It seems like it updates on the first refresh. Anyway, it, it seems to be buggy, right? So it seems to update on the first refresh. And then if you update it, it seems like you have to re-enter it, save it twice. Just, a, again, poor user experience, right? So, okay, so that's one thing. On There's a new bug that we have to take a look into, and I know how to resolve it. It's not... I'm telling you, it's not um, intuitive at all. It's not intuitive at all how you solve that. But th the good news is there's a fix, and we're going to get the answers on this video. All right, so let me click Edit. And the next thing I want to do is to go ahead and drop in some photo in, uh, URLs. So to get my photo URLs, I'm going to go back to Trusty Old Amazon. This is going to be my first photo. And then come back in here and let's do this is gonna be my second photo that's weird that's that's not the right photo the laptop doesn't have that layout does it oh this is a surface oh I thought this was a surface laptop anyway all right so copy image this is a surface pro book all right uh, let's go ahead and drop these in here. And actually, I don't, I don't care for the Surface Pro. I actually played around with it. My, my wife actually got the sur uh, Surface Book, and she used it for probably a day, and we had to end up taking it back because the laptop game, the lap position game for the Surface Book, because of that weird kickstand in the back, 
um, it just didn't work. It wasn't stable and it seemed to fall over and stuff like that. So it wasn't like a, the same stability that you would get on the laptop. So pretty frustrating for her. But we ended up taking it back and she actually ended up getting the Asus laptop. Still super thin, super light. Um, and it seems to work out fine for her. Okay, so in here we got photos. Those seem to be saved, right? I got one, two, three there. And I got four all the way out to the right. So we're good there. Okay, so now how do we fix our quirkiness that we just saw? To resolve that, and actually I forgot about that issue until it popped up again. What you want to do is go to your SharePoint integration to the on save event and tell it to refresh the data source. In this case, inventory. Now, why do we have to do that? I have no idea. And it seems as if the save event, uh, this submit may refresh the data source for this form, or is probably baked in that that whole method implementation somehow. But if you explicitly do this, all your shadow forms get the update as well, right? So let's just save this off. Let's just test to make sure this still works. Uh, when I ran into that bug before, I played around with it, and it worked. And actually, got that idea working with. Um, data collections or collections within power apps and you will see this when we get into our notes tab in another video it's actually the next video um you when you read and write to that data source sometimes you have to explicitly call a refresh in order to see the latest changes on your form all right so here we go so now i'm in edit mode let me get this popped up and then i'll do another control f5 here and the only test we want to do now that we have our refresh on our save event in place is that we want to test and make sure that if I'm on status and I make this change 555 and hit save one my form disappear which it did and I should see the latest and greatest if I hit edit and go back to that status I should still see it I should be able to come in here rename that do that one little update see the change the changes there fine um, and the same for the other ones. Now, here's another thing, and I'm not going to do it here, but when you're testing your form to make sure you got all the bugs worked out, you want to have multiple entries on this uh, on this list using the form and bounce between your items. Now, I've seen some very weird things happen there as, as well, uh, but I think, and I, and I tried this so with that fix with the refresh piece and all this other stuff, it works as expected. But if there's any other changes, and if your scenario is not exactly like this, when you're using these uh, fixes or multiple shadow forms or whatever, make sure you're testing it out with multiple entries on your list. And the unit test is you're going to go to item one, make a change, save it, and then without refreshing or leaving or doing anything else, go to the second item, do an edit, and make sure one, none of your values from the previous bleeds over and two any changes that you make are not in that form it sounds hokey it's like well why would that happen and it only happens when you're interacting with these list items on the list page and that's because you see how smooth and fluent this is i mean they're microsoft is the engineers are, are fantastic i mean they're popping this form up there's no page refresh you're saving things you're seeing them real time without a refresh so to get all that shadow dom you know that's more of a front-end development concept but the shadow dom or dom updates or do all these updates without refreshing the browser there's a lot of caching there's a lot of tricks there and that are going behind the scene so to make sure that um while they're using like this spa single page application type framework or concept uh, you want to make sure that your form works well in that environment. Now, if you're using this, and, and I ha actually have situations where that was an issue, but we didn't have to resolve it because we leveraged these forms, right? Like the new item on the form, you only interact in with them one at a time where you copy this link, go to like a web part, link it or a quick link, link it to the new form, pop that open. It pops open a new browser, your list and that whole, you know, interacting with multiple items in your list without a refresh is not a scenario. But, you know, being an app maker, being a developer, you always want your things to be tight and fresh. And if there's a bug, you try to resolve it. So just one of those things to look out for all right so this is saving 
I don't again I don't have all my data cards wired up just for the sake of this video and because I'm live and I don't have the opportunity to time lapse a lot of these repetitive steps the next thing we want to do is now wire up our uh, photo gallery so we you know for for photo photo gallery it's not going to be dynamic at all and what do we mean by that so if I click in here and I go back to our wireframe this is one of the things that we uh, took a look at in our first um, in the first video of this photo app series power app series sorry if you look at the photos uh, the photo tab here is broken up into two states the one state is for the user to manipulate the URLs and to add in new image URLs the the view state is for them to interact with those photos so you know when it displays you get your main photo which is always going to be this first slot the user can click on any one of these slots and that should display the photo in that main photo viewing pane so let's go ahead and, and drop that together really quickly how long is this video so far it says an hour and six minutes that's not right right all right well if it is uh thanks for sticking with me all right so let's go ahead and crank this out really quickly so for the photo um you know what let's do this let's go to the properties let's just hide this form for now oh there is uh okay let's just set, explicitly set this to false and let's not forget to set that back all right, so we explicitly set that to false. And now we got a blank canvas only for our photo tab, right? So if you click on any other tab, these guys are doing what they need to do. So for this tab, we're blank. Oh, actually, this. All right, let's not. All right, so what first thing you want to do is let's start building out, dropping in the, the controls needed to simulate that gallery format. So this is going to be our, our big main control image, right? And I want to make sure this is positioned the same way as uh, these forms. So let me go to the uh, photo, the photos form, which is actually hidden, but I'm looking for the X, Y coordinate. And my X is top left corner, which, so that's going to be zero. And my Y is 80, so it needs to come down 80 pixels or something like that to cover the header and then the tabs. And that's exactly what I want this guy to be. So I want to make sure that this is 80 and somehow we were spot on. All right. All right. So now, and I want this to be stretched out in the end. I want to kind of get that the full width and hold on. Let me click on my photos tab. All right. So now I get the full width. Now the first now, so that's there. I'm, I'm thinking ahead of myself. I want to do this in sequence so you can see the issues and how we resolve the issues. And I don't want to just resolve them prematurely. I really want to walk through this process with you. So now I do insert. So that main one's there. Now I need to do my four small ones. So my four small ones, I'm going to just come here. And this may not be the right positioning. I don't know yet. Um, just give it a little gap here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to get this right where I need it. And I know I'm going to fill this up. So I'm going to have the image fill up this entire square. And once I kind of get it where I need it, I'm just want to go ahead and copy and paste these guys over. And I'm copying and pasting so that way my height and width are the exact same because they're they're all copies, right? So now once I have that, let me go here and hold on my control key, uh, select them all, let me space them horizontally evenly, and done, right? So now I want to go ahead and rename these guys. One, so I can keep track of them because right now, I have no idea and I created them and I copy and paste them so I want to rename them so I'm just do simple names image slot one right and image slot two same naming convention and this guy image slot three and slot four for this guy all right and now this is my main so let me do image main right so again the concept is they can come in here click on any one of these and the photo that's in any one of these thumbnails will show up here and when it's first when it's first load you want to whatever's in the first position here slot one you want to have that automatically loaded and, and ready to go okay so let's get to it so the first thing we want to do is wire these guys up to use our photos and we're getting the photos from our shadow form, right? 
So our shuttle form, and the good news is because we did that save bit, these guys are already named because what we need is actually in that value data card that's renamed. So these guys are ready, already renamed and ready to go. So if I just do v photo one, right, and dot text, that's going to give me that value. And let me just select that, copy it. Oh, you know what? Let me do this. Let me let me say this all and exit Power Studio because one of the things that you can do and then I learned this I learned this by mistake actually so let me kill this tab I can actually select one of these uh, list items right so if you go into a list item I think this is let me just go into edit mode this is fine right and then go here and do open up Power App Studio from within the list item you get the data from that list item to kind of play with and design with in Power App Studio. Huh? No, I don't want to. I don't. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me go back. No, I don't want to overwrite because I don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose that data. Hold on. Did that. Oh, man. Did I not save that? Yikes. Ugh. Sorry guys. Did I not say that? Please tell me I saved it. If not, I mean it's it's not that I just hate wasting time, you know? Let me see. How far okay. No, perfect. Alright, so maybe I just went into Power App Studio before the other one was fully unloaded. Let's see. Oh, where else would that be? Yeah, let's do override. That's nasty. Okay. Hopefully, I, I don't lose anything. All right, so far, it looks like we're good. All right, so now we did exactly what we intended to do. So we have our sample data, and you can see those photos are starting to pop in. So now, as I go into the rest of these, right and drop them in so this would be v photo two and, and and you notice that even before putting in dot text this this understood that i was dealing with a single line of text or whatever i don't understand like i don't want to practice that though power App studio seemed to figure it out that figured out that v photo two by itself without the dot text um to extract the string value within that control because again if I don't if I don't specify a property I'm setting the control to this to this image property and maybe this is a, a supernatural a supernatural property that can take many different data types me personally I just don't want to get into the that practice of just dropping in controls because there's going to be a scenario where the control would not work and I need to go into a dot whatever to extract out the needed value so thanks but no thanks all right so here we go this is photo three and photo four all right all right so that's going to bring that in and these these are looking weird what's going on you know what let's just drop a border on these so if I drop a nice little border Maybe a nice little blue border just to kind of give it some beginning and ending visual on it. Right? It looks a little bit. It just seems like those photos, especially with the different shapes, uh, that they're just floating. All right, so here's my main. So what I want to do, again, on click, I want to set my main. So to set the main, I just need to get the value here. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. But the repeatable pattern that I love to do is that I would I would try not to call out when possible and you see me doing it here but when possible I would try not to call out a control and then set as value so if I need to set a value here and this is always going to be changing I want to do that via a variable and it could be a context variable or a global variable in this scenario it's going to, I'm going to use a context variable because I only have one screen and I'm not going to go to the explanation the difference between the two but context variables are only scoped to that particular screen whereas global variables are scoped to all screens uh, in, in studio because I'm only dealing with one screen a context variable and a global variable are going to get treated the same right so in this scenario, I'm going to use a global variable because that's what I'm used to. 
uh, but I'm gonna have to wire some things up first so I want to set this in, so let's just see let's just call this var main image right and right now I'm getting that wick squiggly because I never set this anywhere and I'm gonna set this on the uh, on visible property so set main var main screen equal to v photo one right or let, let, let me not short circuit so when I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this var equal to is whatever image is stored here now if I'm not I'm not gonna get into the solution architect behind that the design behind that but I'm gonna set it to image slot one dot image right so whatever's in that image property is where I want to set into this variable and what that does that allows me to one separation of concern because my 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 whole purpose of on the preload is to make sure that whatever image is here is going to be stored here and that's all I need to do all right all right so now for my main image I'm gonna set that equal to whatever this is set to and for on click and you notice that went white and that's only because this uh, on load this on visible in power App studio I have no way to trigger that on visible event so my initial value is not set here but when I start interacting with it within the list everything's just going to flow as is not uh, as, as natural as possible so it's there even though I can't play with it um, I will be able to test and confirm it here shortly all right so here let me go to image main uh, so yeah that's set to the variable so now what I want to do on the click event is set that variable with all of these uh, image properties so for image slot one let me just go to orient select I don't know why they didn't name it on click but on select you want to set var main image equal to slot one dot image and part of the, the developer in me wants to say this dot image like get a reference of this current control dot image but I couldn't find uh, a way to do that so I have to explicitly name it even though it's going to be the same all right so on select here oops and this is going to be the third slot and then on select here this is going to be the fourth slot All right, so now if I hold on the Alt key and click on these, I should see these images changing, right? Now, let me scroll up a little bit, and I'm glad this is happening here. You would notice that this is exposing my buttons, right? And it, these are supposed to be tabs, you know? This is smoke and mirrors, these optical illusions we're doing here. So they kind of fill up this transparent border that's not being filled by the photo. You can set the background color on that main image control, and I'm going to just set it to a solid white. All right, so regardless if my image is not big enough, it will fill up the space and my the bottom of my buttons are hidden and we're good to go. So let me go up here and save this guy, push it out, and then go to this guy. I lost my instance, so let me just go back to the inventory list. All right and let's see how many refreshes it's going to cost me so i'm not going to do a refresh until i get to edit mode oh we forgot the major step didn't we now remember my image gallery should only be displaying in edit mode i don't want this to display in view mode I mean I, I'm sorry my image gallery should only display in edit mode and hmm. the good news is we have all kind of common issues popping up in this video and unfortunately I can't I can't cut it and make this as smooth as possible I kind of have to have these awkward pauses and thought processes along the way all right, so the first issue we have is that even though I wired in my form that on view to show the first item in my slot or image thumbnail, it's not doing that. And that is a 
what you would call a race condition. Meaning that uh, the form is, by the time the form view, oh, actually, that's the wrong, that's the wrong event. That is the wrong event. Yeah, my form visible event is, um, it's not firing, or it's not firing, or it has fired and this control did not execute, or, or something along those lines. I don't, I don't know exactly why this is not working, but I know that this is different than what I, the way it should work. So we have fixed that. Okay, so this, outside of that, this is working as expected, but we have another issue. If I go into edit mode, this should not be there, and then my my fields to change these and update these should be there. And if I go to, if I kill this, and if I go to new, oops, if I kill this and go to new, yeah, same deal, right? So, okay, so let's do this. Let's go and fix some things up. First thing we need to fix, uh, on this on visible, this is the wrong event for that so let me just set that back to false go to SharePoint integration on view and then just add it to the end of this remember all these functions you can have as many functions as, functions as you want you just need to separate them by a semicolon and they all empower apps also for you developers out there um, oh I, I heard Microsoft explain this and this probably explain why power apps to some seem to be way more complex than other products and then for others, like developers, it's like, wow, that's super cool. I can do a lot with less code. Power Apps, um, and I think Flow is the same, and maybe Power BI. I don't know that much about Power BI. But Power Apps and Flow are are, follow, are, are there to, to satisfy three different types of app makers or developers. No code app makers. Are they really developers if it's no code? So no code app makers, low code app makers, and pro code app makers. So that explains it. So it, it floats all of the three, and depend on if your if your solution is no code slash low code, depends on how complex it is, right, and how fancy you have to get. And I think pro code, you will see though we use some of these same concepts, we know that you can series multiple functions and separate them by a semicolon and power apps team fix to make sure that these execute in sequence so if i need a set of variable then use a variable as long as i'm setting it first in the sequence um, it will be in the right state it needs to be for me to interact with it and that's usually uh, that's a pro code concept right um, and a lot of i mean the average person or app maker would not know that unless you um, had those the bruises to to understand what's going on all right so that set so the first issue we had was on view um, had to be set up versus on visible for the form the other thing we have to do is to get this guy our form photo I'm sorry our yeah our photos form the shadow copy to display when it's supposed to display so if I go to visible here and var photo we want so that just that's just going to say only display when the photo tab is selected and right now our image gallery is showing all the time so we have to set that up to true as well so the easiest way to do that is to select all of these guys group them together and then set the visibility on the group itself so if I go to group one and of course I can rename this and say photo group or GRP photos so on my visible here let me just set this to var photos right so that's gonna that's gonna clean things up to where only when the photo tab is selected this thing should show the prop now the problem is I have I have actually both of them showing at the same time I have my photos form in the background and then I have my gallery set sitting on top of it overshadowing shadowing it so to make sure that these only show in the, in the right mode I have to say var photos and form wait how can I get the form mode mm. oh this right here photos 
dot mode this is going to hold the mode on which uh, that the form is in the form mode dot uh, view right and this is wrong right when form mode is not view I want you to show right so let me copy this I want you to show the form and then for this group photos tab and when foreign mode is view or equals to view and that's how you handle that and I'm not going to be able to get those different foreign modes here in studio so to really test this out I have to push this up and um, save it let me let me know what you guys think about going live and really seeing this real time without any edits or Hollywood cuts uh, I can't even do my dance. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling kind of boxed in and limited here. So, but I don't know. We'll figure it out. I keep playing around with it. And there's there's definitely a lot of tweaks I need to do. But we, we'll figure it out. All right, so let me do this. Um, I would love to turn this into, instead of doing this to like uh, edited videos that I can do, because this is actually the same concept I do. I just run this through an editor and take some of those dead spots out or try to speed up certain things that which is redundant task. Um, but this is actually my same format. But I think the benefit of going live is one jumping into the Q&A or really open this up to be Q&A and to address some of those. So maybe that's maybe that's the play if I if I end up doing this twice a month on Saturdays. All right, so here let me look at this. So I'm in edit mode. My photos are there. I can change them, right? If I hit class cancel and then just view this, hit photos and then there is my photos. I can go between them. My first one is always live uh, just to ensure that this is working. Let's make this double view here, the first view. So if I go into edit mode here, go into edit, hit photos, change this first one. I'm going to do a select all and then paste. And yeah, and this, this seems crammed. So like if you feel like uh, I should give my users more real estate so that way they can see the whole URL just change it to uh, multi-line text and that, that'll solve that for you but that's it I mean this is working as expected this is updating I, I'm thinking that I mean if you look at our form maybe give them more real estate and we got enough real estate like give them more real estate for that description field maybe auto format these for currency to where you always get the dollar sign and the two decimal spots um, there's some other quirky stuff like um, static like this is the one that always irritates me one uh, how do you set the the current date as the default date so you don't get that 12 31 2001 like I want today to be the the starting point for this right so how do you do that so that's some cleanup stuff there uh, approved manager this is going to expose everyone in the uh, in my AD right so approved manager may be limited to where really there's only three people that approve this don't open it up to the entire active directory to where someone can send this to someone that shouldn't approve it um, how can you scope that so let, let me jot these down so we got fixes for next video well the main thing we want to do is to wire up our, our notes tab this is not wired up so we want to get that wired up so let's wire up our notes tab Deshaun, you got too many windows open. Use this window. All right. So fix this for next video. Go. Uh, wire up. Notes tab. Next. Uh, default date for date controls. Today. Next. Uh, currency format for currency only makes sense what else oh large description field and that's easy what else um <laughs> anything else you want to see 
if there's anything else, any common scenarios that you have in your forms that you want to say, well, how will I solve this? Um, post that into the comment section. Try to do it like within a day or two of watching this video so that way I have time to put it in and um, I'll, I'll, I'll have an update. I'm trying to push these out by every Saturday. If I can do once a week, that would be ideal. Going, I'm not going to go live every Saturday. I think I'm going to go live probably, like I say, twice a month or whatever. Uh, I, I want to. I definitely want to do Q and A because I think that's where you would get probably the most value. Because I can't think of or every scenario, and your scenario may not be the same as some of my scenarios. So I definitely there's. I think I think there's a lot of value in Q and A, but uh, I definitely want to get to the point where the cadence of dropping these once a week and airing them on Saturday. So anything that you would like to see in the next upcoming video that's the benefit of watching it live and you got to hit the alarm um so that way you get notification when these drop and you have enough time frame to drop in your next question all right that's it for this video um more more to come let me know what you think about this live though i mean i'm on the fence i feel boxed in but uh yeah just let me know but thanks for hanging out with me and uh catch you in the next video take care now to figure out how to turn this thing off all right so i i got two of these guys here so that's obs and that's this is my youtube all right so let me uh wait what uh oh man How do you turn this thing off? Oh, end stream. Are you sure you want to end the stream? Yes.